All right. The multiverse is a concept which I find very interesting. The thought of other universes out there, I just find personally really cool. Now, it's come to my attention that some people have taken an interest in my Undertale content. So, I just decided to incorporate some multiverse stuff with Undertale. So anyways, today we're going to be talking about the different alternate universes in Undertale. But we're not talking about the universes in general. Today we're going to focus on a specific character in those alternate universes. And that character is, of course, if you looked at the title of the video, Sans. Now after doing some research, I learned that there's at least a thousand different Undertale AUs. Which means there's quite possibly over a thousand different versions of Sans. Now, growing up with Undertale, I do know a few of the more popular ones like Underswap, Underfell, Underlust. I don't want to talk about that one that much. But there are a lot of different and obscure ones that I had no idea about growing up. So anyways, let's get on with the video. I'm going to just be talking about different Sans AUs. Now, for these AUs, I'm probably just going to go over like what universe they're set in and their different kinds of powers and personality, and I guess some backstory too. I kind of want to be brief about each one because if I were to go over all of them in detail, this video would probably be 10 hours long, and I do not want that. Now, because there are potentially thousands of different Sans variants, I'm not going to go over all of them in one video, and I'll probably make this a uh, multiple part series. Also real quick, a big thank you for 2000 subscribers. I cannot believe I've actually made it this far, so thank you very much. Also, make sure to comment what your favorite Sans AU is, because comments help the algorithm. Anyways, without further ado, let's start off with... Classic Sans is the Sans we all know and love from the regular Undertale. If it wasn't for this guy, there wouldn't be any other Sans AUs. He possesses bone attacks, gastro blasters, telekinesis, and of course... Anyway, you all know this guy. He is probably the most popular Undertale character, so let's move on to other ones. Fell Sans, or Red, is a Sans AU from the universe Underfell. I'm pretty sure he's one of the first AUs ever made for Undertale, and unlike Sans, he dons black and red clothing and a glowing red eye. Due to the nature of the Underfell universe, this Sans is a lot darker and edgier, and he's more intent on killing the player. His attacks are all similar to regular Sans, except all his attacks are red. Now, just a quick disclaimer before we keep going. The information given on these AUs are a little shaky, since all these characters are fan-made, and different websites have different information about them, so just comment down below if I missed any important information about these characters. Anyways, let's just keep going. Oh, and before I forget, Fell Sands was created by a Tumblr user named Vic the Underfella. I'm gonna start crediting the people who made these AUs starting now because I just feel like that's respectful. So, anyways. Swap Sans is a Sans variant from the universe Underswap. In this universe, Sans' personality from the original is swapped with Papyrus's, and vice versa. It was created by Tumblr user Popcorn Prince, and is basically a lot cheerier and friendlier than the Sans we all know and love. He's seemingly a lot weaker than regular Sans, and instead of puns, he enjoys riddles. Back in the day, I did have a cousin who was obsessed with this guy, and if you're watching, you know who you are. Jin Sans is from the AU Hotarubi Tale, I'm sorry if I butchered that, created by Tumblr user Dreamer Skella Memer. The Sans has flowers on his jacket, a cross for some reason, a crack in his skull, and Papyrus' scarf. He also seems to occasionally don some kind of mask. Despite his appearance changing, his powers and personality are pretty much the same as regular Sans. Deltarune Sans is, well, just basically the Deltarune version of regular Sans. Nothing seems to really change about Sans. 
His personality and appearance is the same. The only difference is he's living on the surface and his brother hasn't been shown yet. We might see more of him later down the line in Deltarune since the game only has two chapters, but for now, he's basically the same guy. Pirate Sands is from the AU Ocean Tale, created by Fort, or Forte, I'm not sure. The Sands dons a pirate outfit and two peg legs. I'm not really sure if his powers are all that different, I do know his gaster blasters do look different though, so there's that. He also for some reason has a cracked skull. Undersource Sands is obviously from the Undersource universe, created by Tumblr user Slylock Sill. In this universe, Sans' sweater and glowing eye are both purple instead of blue. I'm not really sure why so many AUs have Sans with a cracked face, but whatever. Sans in this universe lives outside of the timeline as Kara achieved infinite power. I'm not really sure how strong this one is, I assume he's really powerful, but I couldn't find any information on what he can do. And all the fan art I've seen, he does seem to have some strings, but I'm not really sure if that's his power or not. I couldn't find anything talking about it. Pestilent Sands is another version of Sands created by Tumblr user Hoshi Subasa. Now I couldn't for the life of me find out which AU Pestilent Sands is from, so if you know, just leave a comment down below please. Anyways, this Sans is like a parasite, and he feeds off of the magic of other characters. He has black bones, and there's caution tape wrapped all around him. Although he has the regular abilities that Sans does, he also has a couple new ones. All his new abilities seem to stem from disease, as he can infect someone's mind, he can change liquid to poison, and he can infect anyone around him with any type of disease. What I do find most interesting about this AU is that he has some pretty interesting weaknesses. He requires a constant source of magic to survive, and without a host he can suck the magic out of, he will die. Inferno Sands is from the Brimstone Tail universe, and is another AU created by Hoshi Tsubasa. He dons a black and gold jacket, fingerless gloves, and a red undershirt. He has the same powers as Classic Sans, but he also has the ability to produce fire. He and his AU were both destroyed due to Pestilence draining the universe of all its magic. Zoo Sans is the Sans of the Underzoo alternate universe and is once again created by Hoshi Tsubasa. His outfit is widely different from the original Sans, wearing a zookeeper's uniform and a hat. He works as a zookeeper in an underground wildlife rehabilitation center, and his weapons include a butterfly net and the ability to talk to animals. Other than that, he has the same abilities as regular Sans. He is the current host of Pestilent Sans. Ink Sans is an alternate version of Sans from an unknown universe. He was created by Tumblr users Kamiet and MyBy, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. His outfit is incredibly different from the original Sans's, donning a giant paintbrush, a brown cloak, and a bandolier full of paint. He is one of the most powerful Sans variants and is considered the guardian of the Undertale multiverse. Aftertale Sans, or Gino, is the Sans variant from the Aftertale AU. This AU was created by Tumblr user Lover of Piggies and might be the most confusing one. Gino Sans wears a white sweatshirt and a white undershirt with a giant red slash in his chest. He also wears Papyrus' scarf, and the Lost Soul effect from the Undertale True Ending seems to be covering one of his eyes. In an attempt to take control of the timeline, Aftertail Sans decided to inject himself with determination. Instead, he got stuck in the save screen. He now has the ability to restore the memories of those who forget during resets. Now, if you're thinking this isn't that confusing, it's the next part which kinda confuses me.
Air Sans is another alternate version of Sans created by Tumblr user Lover of Piggies. He is the future version of Aftertale Sans and is hell bent on destroying all the other AUs. He has black bones and wears a black and blue sweatshirt. He also has blue markings from his eyes to his mouth. They seem to resemble tears, but I'm not really sure. He has the same abilities as Sans, but he also has blue strings which he can use to control other people's bodies. These strings can also shatter people's souls. He also has the ability to jump through different alternate universes. Although he is strong, he suffers from half a phobia, or the fear of being physically touched. Fatal Air is an alternate Sans created by Zedramon. He's an alternate version of Geno Sans who was attacked by Error Sans. But due to Geno Sans not being able to die, he just became an Error. For the most part, his physical form hasn't changed that much besides from his eyes becoming red and blue. He also has a large glitching effect around his body. He also has a lot of abilities. He can summon red strings that feel like burning hot metal bars when touched. He can see the codes of other universes, and he has all the other abilities that regular Sans has. Delta Sans is a Sans variant from the Ultra Tail universe, created by YouTuber Animated Zorox. He has a white sweater, black trousers, black shoes, and orange gloves. He also has strange black markings coming from his eyes all the way down to his chin. This Sans had to absorb the Bravery Soul, or the Orange One, in order to defeat a being known as Omega Kara. After defeating Omega Kara, he decided to go out and defend other universes. All his attacks are infused with the power of the Bravery Soul, and he's able to jump to alternate universes. Yeah, for this one I have no idea what the hell this is about. If anyone could explain it to me in the comments, that would be nice. But it's something to do with the Godverse, it's really confusing. I'll just put the link in the description of the article, so you can read it yourself. From what I could gather, this Sansa skeleton, in quotes, is some super godlike being that's powers out of universe. I mean, he wears a purple jacket and has a red X on his chest. That's all I can really say. And according to the wiki, he does have very good hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. Um, please, seriously, someone needs to tell me what the heck's going on, because I have no idea what to say. Fresh is an alternate universe Sans from the Underfresh AU. He was created by Tumblr user Lover of Piggies, and although looking like Sans, is actually a parasitic monster that requires the souls of others to survive. Fresh wears extremely bright and colorful clothing with a backwards red hat and shades that spell the word YOLO. He has a lot of weird powers, like explosive Furbies and a wiffle bat, but I think his weirdest power is that he can censor any swear word. Oh, and not be erased from existence, but whatever. Although he isn't technically Sans, I'm still gonna add him because he's a very popular character in the Undertale fandom. Killer Sans is an alternate version of Sans from an unknown AU. He was created by Tumblr user Rahaf Wabas, and I am so sorry if I mispronounced that. His outfit's just a darker version of the original Sans's, and he's got a strange red object on his chest. In this universe, he decided to aid the player in their genocide run, and ended up getting a lot stronger because of it. Unlike the original Sans, this Sans doesn't actually have any gaster blasters and instead attacks with sharp bones and a knife. Color Sans is an alternate version of Sans created in an unknown AU. He was created by YouTuber Super Yonma. He looks like regular Sans except for the fact that there's rainbow fire coming out of his chest and half his face. In this universe, Sans fought the human on their genocide run, and before being killed, he decided to absorb the human souls in order to defeat the human. He then used the power of the human souls to try and reset the universe. This didn't work, however, and he ended up being trapped in a void. 
He has a lot stronger attacks than the regular Sans. And he has a Rainbow Gaster Blaster hand, which is pretty cool. Nightmare Sans, or just Nightmare, is an alternate version of Sans from the Dreamtale AU. He was created by Tumblr user JokuBlog. He wears a purple outfit and a yellow crown. He also possesses the special ability of bringing out negative energy in other people, causing those around him to be filled with hatred and despair. He also has a brother, who we're gonna get into next. Dream Sans or Dream is also created by Tumblr user JokuBlog. His outfit is very similar to Nightmare Sans's, except for the fact that his colors are a lot brighter. All of his abilities involve positive emotions and empathy, and I'm pretty sure he wields a bow and arrow. Corrupted Nightmare is another Sans variant created once again by Joku, and is the evil and corrupted version of Nightmare Sans. Only an outline of Sans is shown in his appearance. The rest of him is just all black and gooey, with tentacles sprouting out of his back. He was once a human who was power hungry and ended up taking over and corrupting Nightmare Sans. He has the ability to control large black tendrils and the ability to shapeshift. Murder Sans an alternate version of Sans from the Dusttail universe. It was created by Tumblr user AskDustTale and is responsible for the slaughter of the monster population in the underground. He's very similar to regular Sans, except for the fact that he has a hood up. In order to try and stop the human from completing another genocide run, Sans took it upon himself to kill all the monsters in the underground in order to gain the levels to defeat the human. The sheer concept of this alternate universe makes it one of my favorites. Six Bones is an alternate version of Sans that became an amalgamate with his brother Papyrus. They were made by an AU creator named Zarla. Their appearance is quite disturbing, as it's just Sans and Papyrus horrifically stitched together, which is really, really creepy to look at. Although they have all of Sans' abilities, due to them being combined together, it's hard for them to control these powers, and it mostly just hurts them when they try to use it. Horror Sans is an alternate version of Sans from the Horror Tale AU created by DeviantArt user Sour Apple Studios. This Sans has a cracked skull and blood staining his shirt. He also got his eye removed from Queen Undyne. He has a lot of powers that the original Sans doesn't have, like insane physical strength and a giant thigh bone he uses as like an axe. In a lot of fan works too, he is seemingly nigh invincible. Slash Sans is an alternate version of Sans from the AU Neon Tail, created by Twitter user Production Roxy. Slash Sans has an orange jacket, orange bandana, an orange shirt, blue pants, and one pupil has a star, and the other pupil has a heart. Slash Sans wields a golden sword and has a lot of strange abilities the original Sans doesn't have. He can summon phoenixes, create unbreakable shields, and has some sort of electricity manipulation. Although he seems really powerful, he is afraid of spiders. Reaper Sans or Death Sans is an alternate version of Sans from the AU Reaper Tale. He was created by someone named Ren, but I don't have any social links on the Wikipedia page I'm looking at. He looks identical to Sans except for the fact that he wears a Grim Reaper looking outfit and wields a scythe. He has many powerful abilities like Omnipresence, Death Manipulation, Immortality, and Darkness Manipulation. He also has a coffee addiction, which is very relatable.
Weakest Sands is an alternate version of Sands created by Dusty the Goat. This Weakest Sands has cyan pupils with tears streaming down his face, a purple jacket, black shorts, and the head of Papyrus, which is all cracked. Nothing's really known about the power of the Weakest Sands, except presumably he's the weakest character ever. But he does talk to the severed head of his brother, so at least he has another gimmick besides just being weak. Shattered Dream is an alternate version of Sans created by Tumblr user Zoo is Here, and it takes place in Dreamtale. Much like Corrupted Nightmare, Shattered Dream is basically just an outline of Sans, while the rest of it is just corrupted goop and black tendrils on their back. They also seemingly possess the same power set as Corrupted Nightmare. Alright. That does it for this video for now. I didn't want to get into too many because I didn't want this video to be mega long. So if you have any other Sans variants you want me to talk about, just leave them in the comments below. Also make sure to tell me what I got wrong because all this stuff was really confusing and hurt my brain. Alright, uh, at the time of recording this, I just got back from my vacation to Italy and I'm pretty relaxed right now, but I learned that I got COVID. So if I sound kind of different and even more monotone than I usually am, I'm sorry. I'm recording this while my throat is killing me, but I really need to get this video out. It's been a while. If you read the title, you probably know what this video is. Today I'm going to be doing another Sans AU video because I've seen some people asking for a part 2 and I kind of want to provide. Due to my really lackluster amount of knowledge about Undertale AUs, I decided to check the comments of my video to see what you guys enjoy about the different AUs. I also saw a bunch of people requesting some different Sans AUs, so I decided to take some of those. Also, thank you very much, all you people in the comment section who helped me out with all the confusing stuff in the Undertale alternate universes and timelines. It was really weird for me, and thanks to all of you, I now understand it better. Now I realized in my last video I barely scratched the surface on how many sands I use there are, so in this one I'm gonna be a little more quick about it, I'm gonna give brief information on the different sands I use, so without further ado, let's get started. Oh yeah, and one more thing, I keep doing this, I should really stop saying without further ado, but I do understand that AUs and ATs, or alternate universes and alternate timelines are different things, but I don't really want to change the name because the title of the videos need to stay consistent with each other. Alright, now without further ado, let's get started. Dust Dust Sands or Double Dust Sands is a Sans AU created by YouTuber the Flame Lord and was based off of a concept by someone named Carno Power. Double Dust is another version of Murder Sands or Dust Tail Sands, who after killing the entire underground went to another timeline and killed that version's Dust Sands. After murdering multiple Sands in different timelines and universes, he ended up gaining a lot of hate and termination. He now currently resides in an unknown empty Dust Tail AU. Detail Sands or Determination Tail Sands is an alternate universe version of Sands from the Determination Tail universe. This one I sadly could not find any author. So if you are the author and watching this video, please say it in the comments. He is a Sans who has injected himself with Determination and with that power, he can now reset. Detail Dust Sands or Determination Dust Tail Sands is an alternate universe version of Sans who comes from an alternate universe of Determination Tale, where Sans kills everyone. He's essentially just a stronger version of the regular Dust Tail Sans. Once again, I could not find a creator for this, so if you're the creator and watching the video, please speak up in the comments. Insanity Sans is an alternate timeline Sans created by someone named Zero Dantiro. I hope I did not butcher that. He was infected by one of Gaster's experiments, causing him to go insane and kill everyone in the underground. He learns about the ability to reset from Kara and decides to reset the timeline and murder everyone again. Hyperdust is an alternate version of Dust Tail Sands created by someone named the Only Dust. In his timeline, 
he murdered everyone in the underground, including Frisk and Kara. And now he t jumps through different timelines to kill all the different versions of Frisk and Kara. He wears Kara's heart locket around his neck and has the blood of Frisk on his shorts, which is pretty metal. Alright, for this one, I'm gonna be listing a group because all these characters are from Determination Tale, but they are different Sans they use. There's Determination Tale variants of Killer Sans, Horror Sans, Insanity Sans, Nightmare Sans, and Hyperdust Sans. There's also Ink Sans and Era 404 Sans. There's a lot more, but I don't want to go over every single detail character in one video because I do want some variety. Triple Dust Sands or Dust 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 Sands is an alternate timeline version of Dust Tail Sands. I could not find the creator for this one, so please if you are, comment below. This alternate version of Sands killed every monster in the underground and absorbed the seven human souls. Also in his backstory, the SCP Foundation's in it, and that is pretty wild. Alpha Sands is an alternate universe version of Sands from the Alpha Tail universe. He's apparently the God of Mercy and is brothers with another Sans variant named Error 404 Sans. Not only does his Sans have a lot of abilities, he actually has some transformations as well, like his Soul of Kindness, his Judge Form, his Determination Blue. There's a lot of powers for this guy. Thinking that his brother died, Alpha Sans now wanders across the multiverse, attempting to help every AU he finds. Era 404 Sans is another Sans AU from Alpha Tail, and it was created by Shadical15. I completely forgot to credit that guy before, but I'm just doing it now. He is the brother of Alpha Sans, and became evil due to absorbing some power needed in order to destroy another alternate version of Sans who was threatening his world. He and Alpha's backstory are pretty complex, so I will leave the Wikipedia page for those of you who want to read it. I would love to give a lot of detail, but there are a lot of these guys, so I want to go through them as fast as possible. Infected Sands is another Alpha Tail character created by Shadowcore 15 Alright guys, a little quick thing. I do not know if Infected is actually a version of Sans. I am looking at two different wikis, and the information seems a little contradicting, as one of them just calls them infected, there's no sands, but the other one calls them infected sands. So, I don't know, I'm just gonna count him as a sands variant right now, but if he isn't, leave a comment below, and that will help me understand. Thank you. Infected is a chaotic psychopath, and was the one who Era 404 and Alpha were fighting against. What I find really cool is his backstory, which I will cover because it is pretty awesome. He was once someone named Jacob who underwent intense and painful experimentation. In order to cope with the pain, he ended up creating an alter ego or a guardian of sorts who he called Infected. The idea of a character creating an alter ego in order to cope with trauma is pretty good backstory material, which is why I like it so much. Omnipotent Sans is another eight Sans AU from the Alpha Tail universe. He's apparently the brother of the last three Sans as I talked about. He excels at combat and lives to fulfill the prophecy of Ragnarok. Like the other three Sans, he is extremely OP. Man, there's so many different Sans OCs with universe destroying powers. You know what we need? We need some weak Sans OCs. Cypher Sands or Bill Sands is an alternate universe version of Sands from the Underfalls or Gravity Tail universe. He is a version of Sands who was possessed by the main villain of Gravity Falls, Bill Cypher. If you watched the last four episodes of Gravity Falls, you know that this Sands has universe destroying powers. There's also two different variants of Bill Sands. There's Reverse Bill Sands, which is the version of Sands that was possessed by Reverse Bill. And then there's Error Bill Sands, which is Bill Cipher possessing Error Sands. I also couldn't find the creator of this one, so if you are and watching this, like always, please comment. Handplates Sands, or Subject 1S, is an alternate universe version of Sands from the Handplates universe. It was created by Tumblr user Zarla. 
In this universe, Sans and his brother Papyrus are clones of Gaster who were created in order to break the barrier. He's called Handplate Sans due to the metal plate in one of his hands. King Multiverse is another Sans AU from the Alpha Tail universe created by Shadowcall 15. He was created by Error 404 in order to take the title of Multiverse King. He also has a super form of sorts known as Emperor Multiverse. In this form, he is considered a god of gods. Alright, there's one known as Alpha 404 Sans, but I can't find anything about him because both of the wikis I looked at have been defaced. I could get an author from this one Wikipedia page, someone named Broken Maladen. But if any of you guys have information on this Alpha 404, I would like it because both of the wikis are just completely broken. Next up is a Sans from the alternate universe Axe Tail, created by Uff Banana Frappe. He is yet another Sans who has gone insane, and he wields an axe with the handle and bean made out of a spine, which is also very metal. The most confusing part about him is the fact that he has a daughter, according to the wiki, which does not really make sense to me, because he's a skeleton. I don't think he can, but I'm not really sure. Underhead Sans is an alternate version of Sans from the Underhead universe. I really don't know what to say for this one. Like, he has a hat. That's something. But other than that, his hat is very nice, I guess. Alright. Out of all the Undertale I use, this is certainly one of them. Swap Swap or Double Swap Sans is an alternate version of Sans from the Swap Swap universe created by Orin. In this universe, characters' personalities were swapped but then swapped back to what they originally were. The only real difference this Sans has from the regular Sans is that both of his eyes are blue and he's slightly more positive due to having some, a little bit of personality of Underswap Sans. Gan Sans is an alternate version of Sans from the GZ Tail universe, created by Golzy Blade D. He's a Sans variant who experimented with pills of determination and ended up overdosing on them. He currently lives with Toriel in the ruins. Sudden Changes Sans is an alternate version of Sans from the Sudden Changes AU comic, created by Spouting. In this universe, Sans wears a fancy suit has a gun, and has a coffee addiction, which is all things I really want. When he's angry, his eyes glow red instead of blue. Uh, real quick, I messed up for this AU. I thought it was called Sudden Changes, but the AU is apparently called Oversafe Tail, so that was my bad. Epic Sans is a character from the Epic Tail universe created by Yugo Gear 12 in this universe, Sans received his magic through an eye given to him by Gaster, allowing him to control all the Gaster blasters and bones. He's apparently a huge meme lord and says the word bro a lot, which sounds a lot like me when I was 13. Exhale Sans, X Sans, or just Cross, is an alternate version of Sans from the Exhale universe, created by someone named JK95. In this universe, Sans is a lot stronger as he is willing to train. And he is actually part of the Royal Guard, which is pretty cool. Honestly, I feel like I'm not giving all these different Sans they use justice, as they all seem to have some really cool backstory that I'm not really diving into that much. So if you do want to look at these characters' backstories, go to the Wikipedia pages I put in the links, as by searching up whatever Sans they you want, there's links to their stories down below. So enjoy that. For Swapfell Sans, there are actually six different versions of him. Swapfell is essentially like Underswap as all the characters' personalities are swapped around, and they all have that dark and violent nature like from Underfell. Story Shift Sans or King Sans is an alternate version of Sans created by Vulture the Lively in the Story Shift universe. In this universe, Sans is actually King of the Underground. And his goal, much like Asgore's, is to find the seven human souls and free the monsters from the underground. 
Little Sans, an alternate version of Sans from Little Till AU, created by... Uh, I actually don't know. So once again, please leave that in the comments. Couldn't find anybody. In this universe, Sans is, well, little. I remember reading these comics back in 2015 or 2016, but I'm not really sure if there's any big differences. I do remember enjoying them, though. They were very cute. Hardtail Sans is an alternate version of Sans from the Hardtail universe created by YouTuber said Drazenir. In this universe, Sans has fire powers, and he also has a cracked skull and a red hoodie. Alright, I think I'm gonna stop the video now. I hope you enjoyed, but my throat is really starting to hurt, so I'm sorry for the shorter video. Alright. Well, I'm back with another one of these videos. By this point, you probably already know the drill, but for those who haven't seen the last two parts, I'll give a brief rundown. In this video series, I take stances from alternate realities and universes and list them off, explaining their powers, timeline changes, and that kind of stuff. Now, I know that this is part three, but you don't gotta watch the other two to understand what's going on in this one. But if you want, go ahead and watch them. Anyways, it's been a while since I did these, and I completely forgot what Sanses have actually added on these videos already. So please, if I get some wrong, don't thrash me in the comments. Now, a quick disclaimer, all my information is from different fandoms, and it might be different depending on what website I got them from. So please, leave a comment if you believe I'm wrong about something. I've also linked every single website I've gotten my information from, so enjoy if you want to look at those. Anyways, without further ado, let's get going. Sans Who Laughs, or Blackberry Sans, is an alternate timeline version of Sans from the Dust Swap AU and was created by Epic Nightmare Sans and Harvey Seven Demise. He originated from a world called Violet Swapfell and was a royal guard for Queen Toriel. He was forced to fight his brother Violet Swapfell Papyrus, who began murdering the denizens of the underground for no apparent reason. After a close battle, Blackberry Sands emerged the victor, and before Papyrus died, it was revealed that he needed to kill the monsters of the underground in order to increase his strength and defeat the human. As his brother died, Blackberry Sands absorbed his LV, or level, causing him to absorb Papyrus's memories. He witnessed the human's genocides through his brother's viewpoint, and due to the absurdity of seeing a human child possessing so much power, he began to laugh. Sansu laughs, wears a ripped red shirt, black slippers, and brown pants. Unlike regular Sans, his eyes glow red with his teeth shattered and a knife jammed into his head. Although he loves jokes as much as regular Sans, he adores blood and pain, which is why a majority of his attacks are just blood versions of regular Sans's. Bolt Z Sands, or Bolt Z, is from the Crisis Tale universe and was created by Bolt027. Bolt Z was created when Sands gained the Soul of Wishes, and he wears a dark blue jacket with a white line down the center of it, with his pants being black and white. He has a blue thread on his face, and instead of a glowing blue eye, he has a glowing crimson one. Bolt Z also has the ability to grant wishes due to his soul power, alongside a form called Hate, which causes his power to increase immensely at the cost of his sanity. Correct Sans, or just Correct, was another character created by Bolt Zero and is originally from the Correct Tail universe. This Sans lived on the surface and, alongside his brother, actually had parents. Until his mother, well, died in a car crash. Correct ended up contracting a deadly virus from the incident and was forced to take an unknown serum created by his father, which was known as Project V. Although he was cured, the scars of the incident never faded, which led to Correct having irrational outbursts and panic attacks. He dons a black, yellow, and gray jacket, black and white pants, and black shoes. Besides PTSD, his personality is pretty similar to regular Sans's, except for the fact that he's a weeb. Correct also has a vast assortment of different powers, from an ancient sword called Draco Grandis, sorry if I mispronounced that, to black strings that both cut and repair anything it touches. The most interesting power within his arsenal, however, is his vengeance powers which he gained from absorbing the soul of vengeance. This vengeance boost grants him seven new powers, those powers being regeneration, absorption, adaption, higher precognition, metamorphosis, transcendent powers, and a final unknown one. 
Of course, this wouldn't be a Sans AU without some over-the-top transformation, as Correct also has a transformation called his Genesic form. Sorry if I butchered that. A transformation that came after he absorbed objects known as Genesic Crystals. This form also increases his strength exponentially and can deflect almost anything thanks to its barrier regeneration. Underhell Sans, or just Hell Sans, is a Sans variant from the Underhell universe, and I can't seem to find the author from the fandom page, so for any of these I don't give credit to, just know that I just couldn't find the author. And if you are the author of any of these that I don't credit, just please leave a comment. Anyways, Hell Sans was a former underling of Nightmare Sans, someone we've previously gone over, but after a while he quit and sought out a better life for himself. He currently goes on adventures as a way to increase his power so he can protect those he cares about. Unlike a lot of other Sans variants whose levels are in the millions or god forbid infinity, Hell actually has a level of 24 and possesses a large amount of determination. He also sports a large number of bone attacks and an ultimate move, which is creating a giant unbreakable cauldron and hiding in it until his enemy goes away. He wears a black and red jacket with a black undershirt. His glowing eye is also purple instead of the classic blue. He also has an actual recorded height of 5'4 and a weight of 156 pounds. Jewel Sans, or just Jewel, is a Sans from the Jewel Tale AU created by YouTuber Yannix BP. This Sans is the prince of his own world and acts as a keeper of the Emerald of Kindness. Jewel was forced to fight his father Gaster when the latter grew insane from his attempts to locate the Seven Gemstones, this universe's version of the Souls. After being beaten by his father, it was revealed by the Guardian of the Gemstones that the jewels were granted to those worthy. Jewel was granted the Emerald of Kindness and used this power to defeat his father. After the defeat of his father, Jules travels to other alternate timelines to protect and aid them. He wears gold shoes, a cyan shirt with a green heart on it, a green jacket, a purple cape, and a large golden crown with a green gem in the center of it. His eye color is also green instead of blue, and his powers are essentially the same as regular Sans's, except emerald theme and, of course, the ability to hop between universes. Dire Sands is from the Under Dire universe, another AU created by Yannix PV. Dire came from a universe where torture and slavery was commonplace, and humans were forced to fight in gladiatorial combat. Although Dyer was a slave owner himself, he treated his slaves with kindness until he himself was forced into slavery by his brother due to his lack of power. He was beaten and abused and given a scar on his arm every time he made a mistake, resulting in 1200 of these scars. Eventually, he snapped and killed both his brother and a majority of the people within his AU, minus Chris and Toriel. He now travels throughout various AUs and destroys them out of jealousy, as the residents in them lived happy and free. He wears red and gray shoes, black shorts, a white shirt, and a gray jacket. His eye glows purple after his absorption of determination, and his powers are very similar to classic Sans, but he also has the ability to transform anyone he kills into a slave. Dainai Sans, I have no idea if I'm saying that right, is a character from the Dainai Tale universe, created once again by Yannix. After a large number of genocide routes, Sans went to Alphys in an attempt to put an end to the killings. He gave Alphys the idea for a machine that could split Frisk and Kara into two separate beings. This machine actually worked, and Frisk and Kara split apart. The victory came at a price, however, as Sans himself was thrown into the machine and ended up absorbing some of Kara's hate. This Sans has two separate forms because of the incident, day and night form, like that one wolf Pokemon that I forgot the name of. His day form is kind and caring, while his night form is ruthless and short-tempered. His day form dons a yellow and blue jacket with a glowing yellow eye, while his night form wears all purple with a glowing purple eye. His two forms work in tandem in a fight, with his sunny form relying more on healing and transportation, while his night form is more combat-oriented. He also has the ability to combine the two forms together and each take a half of the body. Cursor Sans, or just Cursor, is a Sans variant created by Mandarine. Once again, I'm sorry if I butchered that. And was created in a universe near Outer Tail. He is an outcode, or a character who stays outside their own universe for whatever reason. He also serves as a protector of AUs out of kindness and moral integrity. He was created by unknown means and doesn't seem to have any connection to any other AUs. He ended up exploring the multiverse and ended up witnessing the battle between Dream Sans and Nightmare Sans. 
After realizing the importance of defending the multiverse, he began to act as a peacemaker between good and evil. He has white, arrow-shaped pupils with arrow-shaped markings on his face. He dons a long scarf cut in the shape of arrow tips alongside black shorts and combat boots, black fingerless gloves, and a blue Dragon Ball Z scouter. He also has the ability to shoot arrows and also has a sword in the shape of an arrow. And, of course, he has the most important power of all, empathy. Regret Sands is a Sans variant of the Regret Tale universe created by Splat Force. Regret Sands was a normal Sans until he was infected by a deadly virus. He is both a roommate and travel companion to another variant, Radiant Sands. His only motivation in life is destruction, as it allows his code to maintain its stability. Regret, unlike most Sans variants, has black bones instead of white ones and dons all black clothing with black wings. He also has a glowing white object strapped to his back in the shape of a guitar. He has the power to manipulate and generate code, and can also create illusions. Not only does he have powerful magical abilities, but his physical abilities are quite great as well. Despite his power, he still suffers from my personal greatest weakness, poor eyesight. Nightweaver Sans, or Ghost Sans, is a Sans variant created by Entail Sans. He was a Sans who was allowed a second chance at life, but at the cost of having to consume magic to survive. After a while, Weaver actually managed to regain his life completely at the cost of his mental sanity. He now conducts experiments and survival games to test the potentials of the people he kidnaps. He's also quite prone to messing with the multiverse. He dons a black and white reaper outfit like that one bear from that anime game and wields ghostly bones. Weaver doesn't believe in happy endings and because of this, sets out with the goal of killing his creator. Alright. Well, that was a nice little part 3 video. Once again, I hope you all enjoyed this, and please, if you desire credit for the photos I put on screen, please say so in the comments if I can't actually find the original creator. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you again in the next. Alright, now that I'm on my fourth Sans AU video, I was starting to think I was running out of Sans AU ideas, but nope, turns out there are a lot of AUs you all want me to talk about. I should probably mention this now, but if you want a Sansa U, please comment on the latest Sansa U video at the time because after three of these videos, I'm starting to lose track of all the AUs I've actually done. Anyways, all these AUs are going to be from you guys and I'll even leave the comment that suggested them. Also before I forget, I saw this comment on my Sans AU Part 2 video by Foxy005 saying how they would have liked for me to ask permission before using their music. I feel pretty bad about this, and if you're watching this Foxy, I'm really sorry. I need some effective way to notice when other creators are trying to get my attention about asking credit and permission, so if you're a content creator and wish for credit or permission, please leave a comment with my channel name Kustopia in it, as it allows me to filter through them easier. Like always, leave a comment if I get some of this information wrong, as I always leave my sources of information in the comments below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get going. <laughs> Last Breath Sans is an alternate version of Sans from the fan game Undertale Last Breath, created by Zerjox and Team Imagination. He is very similar to the classic Sans we all know and love, except for the fact that he's gone through 30 genocide runs. And I mean, what actual person has the time to complete 30 genocide runs? That's kinda crazy. Anyways, after the 30th genocide run, he is approached by Gaster, who reveals the actions of the human and allows Sans to keep all of his memories. And with the help of Gaster, Sans vowed to stop the human and fight until his last breath. Anyways, LB has all the same powers as regular Sans does, alongside reality warping stuff due to Gaster's influence. And he looks very similar to classic Sans until he starts getting hit, as two massive slash marks appear on his chest alongside a massive crack in his skull. His eyes are also glossed over as he is possessed by the man who speaks in hands. Mafia Tale Sans is a Sans AU from, well, you guessed it, the Mafia Tale universe, created by, uh, let me, hang on, let me see. Uh, crap. I can't seem to find the creator of this AU on the wiki, so if you can, please tell me who made this AU in the comments so I can actually give proper credit. Anyways, this Sans is a member of a small gang consisting of Gaster as the boss, Papyrus as a sniper, and Sans themselves as the judge. 
And if you're wondering why I called Sans a they instead of a he, well, according to the wiki, Sans is a they them in this universe, and I am not getting that wrong again. I remember the comments from the Undertale Power tier list about Frisk and Kara. I am not gonna go through that again. This Sans fights with a pistol and a Tommy gun, being one of the only Sans variants I know that doesn't actually use Gaster Blasters. This Sans AU also has my all time favorite outfit with the grey hat and overcoat along with the blue undershirt. Mafia Tail is actually an AU I've known about for a long time and it's honestly a surprise I've gone this long without covering it. Fraction Sans is a Sans variant from the Dainai Tail universe created by Annex BP. Yep. The guy who created a large number of the AUs I've covered has watched my videos. Anyways, Fraction is the king of the Dainai Tail universe and is Sans's and Dainai Papyrus' brother who absorbed fragments of the six human souls. Fraction was the leftovers of what came from the creation of Dainai Sans, and only gained emotion after absorbing fragments of the human souls. He dons rainbow and white attire with a crown and black horns on his head. He has all the traditional Sans abilities alongside Soul Stringing, a Gaster Blaster upgrade by Human Souls, and a Barrier. Asylum Sans is from the Asylum Tale AU, created by... I'm not really sure how to say this name, so I'm just gonna put it on screen. Anyways, this Sans variant is one I might have gone over already, because I have a very faint memory of covering a Sans from a hospital. I might be getting this one mixed up with Handplate Sans though. Anyways, this Sans resides in a hospital and through a mix of losing his brother and painful experimentation, has regressed into a childlike state. He also suffers from a lot of mental breakdowns. This Sans is covered in self-inflicted wounds and wears a straitjacket. I don't really know if this Sans has any special powers due to both his mental state and injured body, so this Sans might be one of the weaker versions, and hey, I'm all for non-OP Sans AUs. Firewall Sans is a Sans AU who doesn't actually come from any specific AU, I don't think. It doesn't say anything on the wiki. The creator of this variant couldn't be found either, so if you guys can, please tell me their name so I can give proper credit. Anyways, FW was created within a firewall and protects it 24-7, even warding off powerful characters like Error Sans in order to keep it safe. He kinda reminds me of Watchdog Man from One Punch Man. Powerful, yet only fights in his own territory. Not only does he have the traditional Sans powers, but he can also create firewalls to throw at enemies, and he also has a power known as Red Code, allowing him to control his enemies for a limited time. This black and white fur coat design along with the blue fire makes FW one of my favorite Sans AU designs. Still not as good as Mafia Tail though. So I might have some explaining to do. When I was first writing this script, I got a comment asking for firewall sands, so I decided to look them up and use the one I saw. But then I saw another design and decided to click on it, and it turns out I wrote about a completely different firewall sands. Oh well. Firewall Sans is a Sans variant created by Relicarn. Now I couldn't find any backstory on this guy, but his design is very sick. He's got all black bones with a black and red jacket alongside white and black shorts. He also has glowing red eyes along with weird markings on his left eye. He also has two large bone legs protruding out of his back. Outer Sands or Space Sands is a Sands variant from the Outer Tail universe created by Toomey27. This Sans is actually incredibly similar to the original Sans, with the only exception being his star-themed outfit and a slightly more loving and caring personality. This Sans dons a yellow and blue jacket and a black undershirt. This Sans also actually has a birthday, that being April 15th, 1999. Pallet Sands or Pallet Roller is the offspring of Dream Sands and Ink Sands created by Lasserland. Now if you're wondering how that's even possible, when a reality bending skeleton and another reality bending skeleton come together, they fight and the leftovers from that battle create a child. Or so that's what the wiki tells me. Pallet has a white jacket and hat, a scarf covered in paint, and massive green stars as pupils. Now I have to give thanks to the guy who suggested this one to me. You showed me that there aren't just Sans AUs, but offspring of Sans AUs. Almost 8 years in the fandom and I had no idea about this. Dust Trust Sans is the Sans version of Dust Belief Papyrus and was created by Dilly Wolf. After Swap Papyrus decides to slaughter the underground in order to gain enough power to stop the human, Sans figures out his plan and is forced to kill his brother. 
After learning about the human's actions, Sans vows to finish what his brother started. This Sans dons his traditional underswap attire with Swap Papyrus' hoodie wrapped around his waist. He wields two purple bone swords and possesses four extremely cool boss phases that I'll show on screen. And these transformations are extremely creative and god! Chess Sans is the Sans AU from the Chess Tale universe. His author at the time is unknown as I cannot access the animo and discover who the author really is. Oh god, that's the plot to Gravity Falls. This Sans acts as a pawn on a chessboard, only capable of moving one square at a time. This Sans also has some pretty darn good attire, donning a black vest and a blue and black jacket. This Sans' special power is being pretty darn good at chess. Alright. Well, that does it for the Sans I use right now. I'm sorry that this video is so short. Finals are coming up and I am stressed out of my mind. I couldn't even get a video out last week and I really needed to do this. I'm gonna be so happy when summer break gets here so I can actually start making more videos because I love doing this. Anyways, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I've been getting a lot of comments recently about different stances you guys wanted me to cover, and I was getting a lot more than usual, and since it's been a while, I might as well make another Sans AU video. Now, I've been getting a ton of comments about things I got wrong in my past videos, and it's nice that you guys take the time to explain certain things to me. From what I've seen, Undertale alternate timelines are essentially versions where events transpire differently, while alternate universes are versions of Undertale that have at least one big change to them. But wouldn't that mean alternate timelines are alternate universes because both take place in alternate locations where something different took place? Wouldn't changing the flow of time and creating something out of the ordinary create an alternate universe. Man, the multiverse is confusing as hell. Anyways, I got some good ones for you today, so let's get started. Butter. Oh boy, when I first saw Froggit Sans requested, I was thinking, oh, this guy is gonna be funny. It's probably gonna be like a Froggit with Sans' hoodie or something silly like that. It was not. So I'm gonna give those who don't want to be scarred for life an out, and post the time frame to skip this sans entirely on the screen now. As for the rest of you, we're gonna wait a couple seconds to let those who don't want to be scarred have an out. Alright, we should be good. Froggit Sans is an AU version of Sans who comes from the Under Anomaly universe created by Skull Anomaly. This Sans resides in a world 60 years after the original Undertale, and was the result of two timelines being born inside one another or as the wiki calls it, Siamese Twins. Now, a lot of dark and messed up stuff happens in this story, and if you want to read the full thing, I'll link it in the description below. But what happens with Sans is that he gets infected with a mysterious disease, resulting in him becoming horribly disfigured. He still dons his iconic hoodie, but his legs are now white, bloody, and frog-like, with his hands now being clawed and covered in blood. He wields Asgore's trident with a bell wrapped on it, and his face is covered in odd purple cysts, with a golden bubble-like object with a black middle plastered on his neck. It looks a lot like those bubbles produced on a frog's neck when it croaks. Now what I'm describing is just a little part of a bigger story, and if you want to experience it for yourself, once again check the description of this video. Seriously, it's a very detailed and interesting story, and I'm not doing it justice with this little portion of my video. Go check it out. Divine Last Breath Sans, or Divine LB Sans, is a Sans variant created by Cloak, a sprite animator who asked me specifically to put their AU in the video. Now, this LB Sans was approached by Gaster, who took the souls of everyone Divine defeated, combined them into one, and allowed him to absorb it, resulting in him having glowing red eyes and a massive red object on the right side of his head. Now, I don't know if this is a giant slash, fire, or a horn, but it looks pretty sick. This sand sports a level of 100, wields the real knife, and has the power of true determination. With this power, he faces off against Exgaster. The question is, does he win? Go watch Cloak's video and find out. I will link his channel in the description and go watch his sprite animations. They're pretty awesome. This Sans has red bones, gaster blasters he can ride on, spears, and what seems to be the ability to summon different versions of himself. Toast! Toast Sans is a Sans variant from the Toast Tale AU created and requested by Toast Arc. 
This sand was created by an entity aptly named The Creator, a ghost-like being with a yellow halo. He wears a brown jacket with a yellow hood, brown shorts, yellow socks, and brown sneakers. This sand fights with different colored toasts in the shape of bones. A gaster blaster made out of toast, a toast greatsword, a toast shield, and the ability to make it rain butter. He can also summon toast that heals him. According to the creator themselves, Toast Sands was created because they thought giving Sands toast powers would be funny. And yeah, kinda is. All this talk about toast is making me start to crave it though. Team Split is a group of Sands they use that was created by Yannick's BP. The group is led by Dainai Sans, a Sans AU previously covered in this series, and was formed in order to destroy or rehabilitate every evil Sans variant in the multiverse in order to keep it safe. They take in anyone who believes in their cause and follow a clear hierarchy. The Alphas are the ones who are closest to Dainai and the team's most powerful members. The Betas are in charge of healing and reconnaissance alongside being backup fighters. Gammas are those who dislike fighting and serve as scouts or scavengers, and Deltas are those who aren't actually part of the team, but do aid in their efforts occasionally. If you want, I can make a whole video on Team Split and go over each of the members. Alright, this information might be wrong, because the wiki I found this information from was entirely in Japanese. I had to translate it all into English, but I feel like some stuff might have gotten lost in translation. Anyways, let's do this. Outspare Sans is a Sans AU created by XX Kimchi XX. It's also an extremely well-made Scratch game. Like, holy crap. I didn't know Scratch games were this good. This Sans is from a timeline where the monsters have completely given up on going to the surface. Besides the traditional Sans attire, he has a dark yellowish green colored undershirt, headphones, a jade magatama or curved bead necklace, shoes instead of slippers, and a cigarette just floating next to him. His gaster blasters also have a weird mark on their foreheads. Man, I still can't get over how impressive this fight is, and it was made in scratch. That's crazy. <laughs> Anxiety Sands is a Sans variant from the Anxiety Tale universe created by Hysa. This is certainly one of the more interesting Sans variants. I tend to categorize these Sans I use as either reality destroying gods or just complete memes, but on rare occasions there are some who are just randomly mundane. A good example of this would be Underhat Sans. It's such a simple change that makes someone ask why. Anyways, this Sans falls under that category. Anxiety is a coffee addict whose jokes are always awkward and fall flat. According to this video a commenter told me I should watch, his outfit was chosen by Papyrus. He is unable to face the human and always ends up looking away when interacting with them. His outfit is entirely made up of grey colors with his undershirt being a turtleneck instead of a regular shirt. Despite how anxious he always is, he's actually a lot tougher than his original counterpart, as his constant trembling gives his attacks unpredictability. He also kinda reminds me of that kid from South Park, but I don't really remember their name. In another thing, you're ugly. Dale Conagher is a Sans variant from the Overtime universe, a world where Undertale and TF2 are mashed together. This was created by a guy named German Peter, and Overtime itself is a full game that you can play. It's genuinely really good and has an amazing final boss. His outfit is essentially just that of the blue engineer from TF2 with the overalls, undershirt, goggles, and hard hat. His attacks are all based off of Engie's weapons with his wrenches and secondary weapon the short circuit. Overall, one of the simpler Sans variants and one of the only ones who was actually a human instead of a monster. Money. Here we go. Money talks. Decadent Society Sans, or DS Sans, is a Sans variant and an alternate version of Underfill Sans based on Swapfill Violet Papyrus. Confusing, I know. In fact, DS is so confusing that the wiki itself seems to be confused on what exactly his story is. All we really know is that there was a lot of infighting regarding DS's design, which ultimately resulted in a design change, which is weird because the decided canon design isn't what's shown first on his page. Anyways, this Sans doesn't seem to have a concrete backstory, but we know he constantly tries to make money and eats mayonnaise. He also sells chili dogs. 
His design is also pretty cool, with his former design having a scarred red eye, a jacket, and undershirt alongside a gold chain and cigarette. His new design sports a blue and green vest with blue eyes. The wiki is begging for more information, so I left it in the description for you DS Sans fans to go help them out. Inverted Fate, or Lieutenant Sans, is a Sans variant from a universe where Azrael failed to change the timeline, which resulted in the characters within it to become drastically different. Sans included. Created by dorks, Lieutenant Sans was forced to kill his father at a young age in order to prevent the destruction of the core. He decided to become a member of the Royal Guard and ended up as the right-hand man of Alphys. This Sans dons a white shirt, black and white pants, blue boots, and a blue scarf. As a royal guard, however, he dons shiny gold armor, but keeps the blue scarf. Overall, this Sans is probably one of the most fleshed out variants I've ever seen, and his story deserves a read. Like everything else, I've linked it in the description. Alright, every time I reach the end of these videos, I have no idea how I want to finish them off. Writing a conclusion is hard. Anyways, remember to leave a comment on this video for what Sansa you want to see next, and I will see you all in the next video. <laughs>few months ago, I decided to go watch Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and it was an alright movie. It only had the best animation I've ever seen, an amazing story, and a spectacular cast of characters. Yeah, just that stuff. Now, this movie seemed to spawn a lot of different things. A ginormous amount of Spider-Man OCs, one of my favorite memes this year, and a British person that I actually like. Now, although all that stuff was pretty cool, the one thing that stuck out to me was the concept of a spider society. A large group of individuals from all across the multiverse who are united together under one common goal is quite an interesting idea. And while I was doing research for my Sansayu video, go check that out by the way, I found that groups like this actually exist in Undertale. Now, I was originally going to do a video on one specific team I found called Team Split, but I decided to do a few of them because I ended up becoming very interested in these types of groups. So today, I'll be going over the organizations formed across the Undertale multiverse. I'll be going over the group's leaders, goals, hierarchy, members, and more. Remember that these videos don't go into full detail about everything, otherwise these videos would be incredibly long, so as always, the information about the groups will be in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. You are bad guy, but this does not mean you're bad guy. Team Void is a multiversal organization founded by Shattered Dream Sans, a Sans variant I am 99% sure I've covered in a previous video. I think it was either Sansa use one or two, but I'm not really sure. Anyways, the group's goal is complete domination over the multiverse, and is led by Shattered Dream and Error 404 Sans, with their sub-leaders including Underfill Sans, Nightmare Sans, and Bill Cipher Sans. It's been a while, have I talked about this guy before? Because I don't remember this guy. Anyways, the team has a very clear and long hierarchy, with members being separated into different divisions. The Delta Division is composed of the weakest and borderline useless members of the team. Makes you wonder why they even are part of it in the first place. A few members of this division are Negative Tail Sands, Undyne, and Asgore, Broken Papyrus, and Horror Swap Papyrus. The Gamma Division is composed of semi-competent members of the team, capable of defending themselves effectively. Some of these members include Horror Sands, Murder Sands, Alert Sands, and Clantail Flowey. And wait, there's one more. Afton Sands? Like the man behind the slaughter? Seriously? The Beta Division includes powerful members who are used to complete high-risk missions. The Division includes Killer Sands, Insanity Sands, Dust Belief Papyrus, and Collapse Sands. The Alpha Division consists of the group's most capable members. Without this division, Team Void would lose a large chunk of their strength. The members of this division are also said to be comparable in strength to Ink Sands. Members of this team include Six Bones, Error Sands, Screen of Death Sands, and Reaper Dust Sands. 
The Omega Division is a group consisting of Team Void's top brass. Each of these members are key to the group's success. The division consists of Liquidation Sands, LV Tail Sands, Malfunction Sands, and Mysterious Sands. The Zeta Division consists of members who are incredibly useful for one specific task. An example of this would be Pestilence Sands, whose infectious gas is used to primarily control people. The Proto Division is composed of leaders who command smaller groups within Team Void. An example of this would be Killer Sands, who leads the Murder Time Trio. Wait, isn't he also a member of the Beta Division? I guess certain members can be part of more than one division. The Voitia Division consists of Extra and Backup members. These include King Multiverse, Phantom Sands, and Phantom Papyrus. The team also includes Kindred Sands and Springtrap Sands. Alright, what's with the FNAF characters and Gravity Falls characters being in the Undertale multiverse? What's next? Steven Universe characters? Oh. The Kirvo Division is composed of members who work as spies for the organization. These include Betty, Siren Sands, and Insane Belief Papyrus. The final division within the team is the Theos Division and is composed of the team's leaders. I've already gone over them, so I'm not gonna list them off. The team also has a large group of right and left hand men. One of these second commands is Killer Sands. Man, this guy is a real team player. The group also includes a decent number of beings who are under mind control or are being puppeted. Guess who's a part of this group? Team Void's main headquarters is a large medieval palace within a dimensional cube that makes it undetectable. Now, according to the wiki article, the team isn't truly evil. Now, I'm not the kind of person to throw out accusations, but when it's specifically stated that one of the tactics you use is to destroy an entire universe, I think you might be evil. The group also claims to not torture people who refuse to join their team. No, they just kill them. How lovely. At least they aren't homophobic. Anyways, the organization is incredibly powerful and has seemingly an infinite amount of funding. But if a decent number of your members are capable of destroying universes, does funding really matter? What is it they've sent us? Hope. Team Hope is a multiversal organization founded and led by a Frisk variant called Core Frisk and Ink Sands. It was originally formed to prevent Team Void from multiversal domination, but has grown to become a peacekeeping force that spans throughout the entire multiverse. The team has a few sub-leaders as well, those being Fresh Sands, Epic Tail Sands, and Hack Swap Sands. Team Hope allows for anyone to join and even takes in refugees from universes ravaged or destroyed by Team Void. The team's main headquarters is in the Omega Timeline, an interdimensional space owned by Corfrisk. It was originally a vast sea of white, but was transformed into a massive sanctuary for those who had lost their homes. Like Team Void, Team Hope has a group hierarchy. Due to the organization having different leaders, the ranks and jobs are quite loose. The Exigency Division consists of first responders that provide supplies and medical assistance to those injured. Members of this division include Flowerfell Frisk, Reaper Tail Toriel, and Echo Tail Frisk. The Shield Division consists of the tankiest members of Team Hope. Their job is to protect the Omega Timeline from threats and are usually never tasked with missions. This group consists of Implosion Sands, Flowerfell Sands, and Abyss Tail Sands. The Spear Division consists of the group's heavy hitters and are used to combat a threat effectively and efficiently. The group consists of Glitch Tail versions of Frisk, Kara and Azrael, GZ Sands, and Explosion Sands. The Explorer Division is used to explore the multiverse and create good relations with the inhabitants of unexplored universes. The division allows anyone to join it and consists of Triad Sands and Savebreaker Sands. The Ember Division consists of the group's decently competent members. It includes Dust Trust Sands, Phantom Papyrus, and Quantum Tail Sands. The Secrecy Division consists of the team's trackers and spies. Geno Sands, Alpha Sands, and Perseverance Sands are all members of this division. The Apex Division consists of the group's strongest members. These include Error Frisk, Neon Tail Sands, Delta Sands, X Sands, and Ultra Sands. The Preeminent Division consists of the group's top and most important members. These include Seraphim Sands, Error Shift Kara, and Puppet Tail Sands. The team also has allies who don't fully associate with them. These include Portal Kara, Reaper Sands, and Reaper Tail Muffet. The team also includes the original Universe Sands, Papyrus, and Frisk. Overall, a pretty great team, and thank god Undertale doesn't have any canon events, right? 
Ah yes, Team Split. The first multiversal team I found. Anyways, these guys are led by Dainai Sans, Dainai Papyrus, and Fraction Sans. Like I said in a previous video, Team Split's primary goal is for multiversal peace and the complete removal of Evil Sans variants, whether it be through rehabilitation or extermination. The group resides in the Split Zone, a dimension accidentally discovered by Dainai Sans that was turned into a base. Anyways, unlike the other two teams, Team Split has a very compact hierarchy. The Gammas are the ones who act as the scouts, scavengers, and mission debriefers, and members who aren't that effective in a fight. The group consists of Rudy, a ghost that acts as a scout, and Time Girl, a member who can view what's happening in every timeline. The Betas are the group's support members. These guys act as healers and backup fighters. The group consists of Flame Sands, Frostbite Sands, Cosmic Sands, and Relativity Sands. The Alphas are the team's top Brass and Dainai's direct partners. These guys include Jewel Sands, Correct Sands, Cold Sands, Dire Sands, and a guy named Dylan. The team, although often associated with Team Hope, usually stay on the sidelines of the Team Hope and Team Void conflict, biding their time and increasing their size. Overall, I would join this team if I was a part of the Undertale multiverse, and it's definitely not because the creator watches my videos. <laughs> So that was some of the teams found in the Undertale multiverse. If this video does well, I'll probably make a second part going into smaller groups like the different trios, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Maybe it's the way you're dressed. Now, everyone watching has probably heard of the myth of Sisyphus before, you know, the one about the guy who has to roll the boulder up a mountain for all eternity, and when he almost reaches the top, the boulder rolls back to the bottom? Well, I'm feeling a lot like Sisyphus right now making these Sans AU videos, because dear lord, there are a lot of them. Like, seriously, I could cover 10-12 to 12 AUs one day, and then 20 more would come out the next, so today, I'm thinking of doing something a little different. Today, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between, we're going to be doing a rapid fire round and covering as many AUs as possible in a short period of time. If you want me to cover your Sans AU, just send me the link to the lore in the comments, or explain it. I ain't really picky. Now, I've got a ton of AUs to cover, so without further ado, let's get started. Alright, cue the music. Time Paradox Sands are a duo of Sanses who have been brought together for an unknown reason and fight the human. The duo consists of a Sans from a pacifist timeline and a Sans from a genocide timeline. Underhell Sans is an egotistical Sans variant from the Underhell universe. His wiki page claims he's the strongest mortal in the multiverse, but I won't go into the Undertale multiverse power scaling because that is a whole kerfuffle on its own. Limbo Sans is an extremely dark Sans variant from the Limbo Tale universe and is quite powerful in the confines of his own universe. Outside of it, he's essentially just a regular Sans. Limbo itself is actually a pretty freaky game, give it a try if you want. Sino Sans, or Before Tail Sans, is a Sans variant from a pacifist timeline that was ravaged by Akara controlled Frisk. He now works with Underfell Sans to save his own AU. Mandela Tail Sans is a Sans variant that I can only assume is an alternate. I've never really seen the Mandela catalog before, and in all honesty, the Scrimblo catalog is just better. Ace is a Sans variant from the Chance Tail AU, which is actually a comic that you should check out on DeviantArt. Anyways, Ace is a master illusionist and is probably one of the best designed Sans AUs I've seen, and gosh darn it, we need to have more Sans AUs where he's a wizard. No reason, I just think it would be cool. Story Spin Sans is a Sans variant from the Story Spin universe, where the roles of the Story Shift universe are reversed. Now, from what I've seen from the art, Sans wields a freaking baseball bat, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. Also, the wiki says he turns into a blob, and I don't really know how to react to that. Like. Is there anything special about the blob? Is it just a blob? Yeah, I don't know, I'm going off script, let's keep going. Alter Tail Sans is a Sans variant who has taken Toriel's role as a caretaker of the ruins. He gave up his role as king for his brother Papyrus, who then betrayed him. He's also the older brother of Gaster in this universe, which is weird because Gaster is usually the dad in these AUs. Sensational Illness is a mysterious entity who was once a human named Samuel that made a deal with a being known as Unum Supra and became a twisted version of Sans. Now, I say this a lot, but this is the best Sans design I've seen. Like, holy hell, it is so creepy and off-putting, I love it. Dust Dust Divine Hatred is a version of Murder Sans that managed to permanently kill the human and destroyed his whole multiverse. His powers transformed him into a being of pure hatred. 
Man, Undertale AU characters are up there with SCP characters in terms of power. Dear lord. Toxino Sans, the Sans variant that was infected through a mixture of magic and chemicals. He wears a mask in order to prevent spreading his infection. Despite his toxicity though, he serves as a protector for the people. Paper Crane is an outcode that was created by the leftover remains of Sans's from dead timelines and because of this, the said remains act as one collective mind that often gets confused. So it's like if a Twitch streamer gave their entire chat control over a video game. Wiki Sans is a creepypasta entity that was created by a glitch in the Undertale Wiki that created this image. This entity is capable of corrupting the Undertale Wiki and quite possibly other pages of the internet as well. This is actually such a creative concept for a character and I love it. Alright, why the hell is Green Sans so badass? He's literally just a Sans but green and yet all the images of him go so goddamn hard. His design also has something on his chest, and I swear to god if that thing is the WhatsApp logo, I'm going to scream. VHS Sans is a Sans variant that has become corrupted when his files were messed with. Due to that incident, he is able to cheat a lot during fights, and if he defeats you, you turn into Sans. Which, knowing my viewers, probably won't bother you guys too much. Eventual Sans is a Sans variant from an unknown timeline and acts as the prophesized Omniversal Chosen. He's essentially like the main character of the multiverse, I guess. He wields a sweet looking sword called the Blade of the Omniverse, but if I were to name it, I would have just called it the Throngler. Farm Sans is a Sans variant from the Farmtail universe, a universe where everyone just loves to farm. He's literally the definition of that one meme, it ain't much but it's honest work. His gaster blasters are also just cow heads. Awesome. Dance Tail Sans is a Sans variant who just loves, as the kids say, busting it down. He loves hip hop and breakdancing, and surprisingly, out of all the AUs out there, I actually remember seeing this one in my early Undertale phase. Pale Sans is a Sans variant that came into existence without a soul and is incapable of feeling any actual emotions. And he has the power of taking away creativity from other AUs, which is ironic considering his design is literally just regular old Sans with a scarf. Uh, I actually don't have a Sans AU, but if I did, he'd just be a regular old lacy Sans, except he'd have sunglasses and a Hawaiian shirt. And if anyone out there got to this part, do not draw Sanstopia. I would not be able to explain that to any one of my friends and family. Alright, well that wraps up another nice little bow on a Sans AU video. Even after going through 20 of these, there are still a ton of AUs left I have to cover, but hey, I'm gonna keep rolling that boulder up the mountain till I drop. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I will see you all in the next. After finishing up that Deltarune monster video, my idea well was pretty bone dry. I couldn't really come up with anything. And I've done tier lists, sans AUs, part 4s coming out eventually, top 10 lists, and even a video on why Birdly is the best character in Deltarune. You should watch that one by the way. I was kinda panicking, but then I realized something. All of my videos are about the Undertale monsters, so why not make a video on the humans? They're pretty important in both Undertale and Deltarune. Heck, Undertale's whole plot revolves around you being human. Now, I know what you're probably gonna say. Aren't there only three human characters? There's only Frisk, Kara, and Chris. That won't be a really long video. Well, dear viewer, yeah, you'd be right. There are certainly not enough humans in both Deltarune and Undertale to where I can make a decently lengthy video. So, I'm going to be going to the one place that's never disappointed me. That's right, I'm going to fan-made OCs. If I'm going to be honest, some of these human OCs I find kind of interesting, while others confuse and terrify me. Anyways, I should probably get started with the video, so let's get going. Now, of course, we have to start this video off with the main protagonist of Undertale themselves, Frisk. They're the human you control throughout the entire game and lack any kind of emotion and the ability to speak. Despite their apparent emotionlessness, Frisk's flavor texts when they do an action in combat paint them as just a kid goofing off. I don't really have to talk about them too much because you know Frisk, I know Frisk, everyone knows Frisk. Now, Kara, in my opinion, is definitely a character that gets an incredible amount of hate because of their appearance at the end of the genocide run. Now, there is the debate on whether or not Kara was the quote-unquote true villain of Undertale, and in my opinion, they weren't. But, they were still not a good person. 
Kara was the first human to fall into the underground and was adopted by the Dreamers. They seemed to loathe humanity and even devised a plan with Ezreal to wipe them all out. Now, I think the biggest debate when it comes to Kara is how to pronounce their name. I don't really think it matters, but I see a lot of people arguing about it, and I am a firm believer in the Kara supremacy. Out of the KFC trio, Chris is probably my favorite. Their fight for control against the player is genuinely interesting, and unlike Frisk, it actually seems like Chris has a life of their own before he took over their body. Their backstory is also very speculative as well. One of the theories I really like is that Deltarune takes place in a universe where the monsters won the war, which is why Chris is the only human. There are still a few more chapters left in Deltarune, so maybe we'll get some more backstory. Clover, no, not that one, is the main protagonist of the Undertale fan game Undertale Yellow. They not only control the soul of justice, but they also wield a gun. I actually really like Clover's design, as the cowboy outfit is really sweet. I do have a small Undertale Yellow playthrough on my channel, so if you want, go check it out. Gulliver's Supra is a human OC created by Alteraverse King on Tumblr. He was born in an AU known as Unprecedented Tale and acts as a moderator who desires technological expansions toward other AUs. He wears a black sweater with a brown upper part with tips hooked onto it. He wears black pants and brown boots, and he has long brown hair which he uses to cover his eyes. He also wears glasses and is often seen with a versaphone, and I don't really know what a versaphone is, so I'm gonna look it up on Google and put the first image I see on the video. I am really starting to see a growing pattern of reality bending human characters, and that's not entirely against the canon of the game, all the humans are pretty reality bending. By the way, all these OCs and their backstories are going to be linked in the description, so give them a read if you want. Daniel is a human OC created by Colorverse Official and Ninjago Life. What's special about him is that he was a human born with a monster soul. Because of this, he was cast into the underground. From reading his synopsis, he seems to be like Toriel in his desire to keep Frisk in one place to protect them, but instead of the ruins, it's Waterfall. What really confuses me is how can a human be born with a monster soul? Wouldn't that just be like a monster wearing a human skin suit? I don't really know, and the implications are a little scary. Rika Kostaro is a half-human, half-monster hybrid created by Major808. They are the only character I've seen in this list to have three souls. The soul of trust, distrust, and fear. Granted, two of the three were the result of mind control. She wears a pink and white striped sweater along with navy blue shorts, black stockings, and brown boots. She is also the only Undertale OC I've seen that likes K-pop. I wonder, would there be K-pop in the Undertale world? Would monsters be in K-pop bands? I don't really know how this would work. Tell you what, if this video gets a thousand likes, I will make a video on which Undertale characters would be in K-pop bands. H Sans is a Sans outcode created by TOR Sans. This OC is not only a human, but a Sans AU as well, so fans of my Sans AU series, enjoy. He wanders the multiverse in search of people's pain in order to give himself more power. He wears a leather jacket, a red shirt with black and red socks, monster slippers, dark shorts, and has black hair with red eyes. Jenny Watson is a human OC created by Paul Grote Beverborg. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. She's a monster rights activist who dreams of peace between monsters and humans. She has red hair and a ponytail, green eyes with freckles, and wears glasses. This is definitely one of the more interesting human OCs to me. The aspect of a monster sympathizer who's a human is pretty cool, and the fact that she's not a reality-bending god is also pretty neat too. Minerva is an outcode OC created by Alpha Safe. 
She guards and oversees the multiversal archive known as the Library, a place that contains an infinite array of information of the Undertale multiverse and its AUs. Her job has given her the title of the Librarian. She also has a Barn Owl companion whose name I'm definitely not gonna say because I will butcher the hell out of it, so I'll just flash it on screen. She has curly brown hair and glasses. Her outfit is a little hard to explain, but if you just look up Athena and go to images, Minerva's outfit is basically just that. Alright, there are a lot of odd human OCs in this massive Undertale multiverse, and I'm willing to look at a lot of different ones and talk about them. Just, I'd rather lay off the ones that are just about reality benders, cause those are kinda getting old. Even though I'm not a big fan of reality benders, I do find a lot of them to be really interesting. So leave a comment if you want me to do more of these, and if you have a specific human OC in mind you want me to talk about, I'll do it. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.